this week on Battle Scraps. Battle Scraps is brought to you by Seymour Deer Seed Blends, Lulich Implement, White River Egg Products, and Big Rock Outdoor Productions. Hello and welcome to Battle Scraps. Now editing the show over the first three seasons has been a challenge at times. And the simple truth is that teams often don't film important story elements of their hunt. Some teams are good at filming one thing, while other teams are good at filming another type of element. But no team has been perfect yet. No team will probably ever be perfect 100% of the time. But to do well on this show, or in the outdoor industry, you have to be consistent. And the biggest reason for this issue is simply knowledge. The education and understanding of what to do and why to do it. But the most important thing that you can do to help pull all your various pieces of footage together into one coherent hunting segment is to retell the story after the hunt is over. Sounds simple, but it's been a hard commodity to come by on the first three seasons. However, that's not the case today. And you'll see what I mean as we go. But up first is an example of how retelling the story can turn a small amount of footage into a more interesting hunt to watch. Enjoy. Oh my god, so like this one time, I was totally hunting. Maria and Dominic here, back up in the set. Getting ready to do some doe management here in Doe City. Never know, maybe a nice six-pointer, eight-pointer will walk by. That would be nice. But it was like so boring. I was not seeing anything. And then like all of a sudden, there was a deer out in the woods. And then there was this one deer that stopped in the spot, and then another deer came and stopped in the same spot. And like all of a sudden, there was this deer really close. This, I think it was a girl deer. And I was like, I should shoot that deer, you know, for my freezer. So I guess I, I like missed or something, but it wasn't my fault. Ooh, and then there's this big buck. Marie and Dominic here. Just had that opportunity. I definitely was ready. Drew my bow back. I just didn't didn't take my time. I took my shot entirely too quick. Okay, so maybe it was my fault, but I was like, oh my god, my freezer is going to be so mad because my freezer likes me. Okay, that was actually kind of your total BS clip, clip of the, of the week. week. And now before you start posting comments or sending emails, this is not how I think about or view women hunters. If anything, it was more like a terrible reality show character. But the point was to show you how you can spice up your footage and guide people through your story by retelling it. It not only helps people understand what's actually going on in the footage, it makes it more interesting to watch. So, anything else interesting we should watch? Team Yo's Financial from Maryland here, Battle Scrap Season 3. Yeah. See your orange dot you're aiming at? She's been 
on the hunt this year. She walked away from it at one time, and now she wants to get back into it because me and Maria are. So uh, we're going to take her out this afternoon, get her in this blind. Uh, so I got an opportunity to bring my daughter out here. Her weapon of choice today is the crossbow. She's only 12 years old, so pulling the compound bow is just not going to be efficient enough to kill a deer. There's been a lot of deer coming in here. We had a bunch of mishaps today. Uh, went to one piece of property, couldn't get in. They were having a party. That's a part of hunting a suburban area. And uh, we came over here, and the dog wanted to follow us in the woods. So we're like 15 minutes, 20 minutes behind. about when she just stood there, stood there, and you couldn't get the shot, and you put the safety on, you took the safety off. I was frustrated. You are frustrated. I wanted her to turn around. That's right. Once she turned around, then what'd you do? I drilled her. Drilled her, that's right, baby. Put the smack down on her. All right, stick with us. We're gonna do a little recovery over here. the opportunity today to bring my daughter out here. Uh, this is her trophy. He, like, she really didn't turn around and I really was frustrated because I had to turn it on and off and on and off. And then I fell out of a chair, kind of. Then I had to fix myself. And then she looked at me. And it was frustrating because I really wanted to kill her and I did, so yes. This is her. This is my baby, 12 years old, killed her first year. Plotting 101 is presented by Lulich Implement. Hello and welcome to Food Plotting 101. Today we're going to go over proper planting techniques. Throw the seed out and cover it with soil. Done. But the truth is that getting good seed to soil contact will drastically affect how many of your seeds germinate. Of course there's several ways to sow your seed into the ground. You can simply throw it out by hand or use some type of hand spreader for a more even and uh, steady deployment of your seed. 
and you can get into some bigger tools like uh, ATV or three-point spreaders and even uh, use special planter cultipacker combinations either as uh, pull behinds for ATVs and three-point units for your tractor. And of course you'll use a different kind of planter altogether if you're going to be planting corn and soybeans and, and other kinds of agricultural crops. But the majority of us will be planting only a few plots in sizes typically smaller than an acre. But no matter what you use, you have to consider the size of the seed and the rate at which you need to spread that seed. For example, currently Seymour Deer recommends a seeding rate of 10 pounds per acre for all their blends. Unless you're doing it by bare hand, your spreader is going to have several settings on it that dictate how much the seed compartment will open, releasing seed to the spreader wheel. For a small seed, you're going to want to have a lower setting with a smaller opening. And this is going to help keep you from going through too much seed. And on the flip side, if you have a larger seed, you're going to want a higher setting with a larger opening just to let that seed out. And make sure you check out this week's expanded article over on SeymourDeer.com to learn more about seeding rates, find out what type of seed spreader is right for you, discuss uh, blends with variable seed sizes and more. But getting the seed on the ground is just half the equation when it comes to planting. And next week, we'll cover how to get good seed to soil contact. See you then. Here we are, heading in, 2012 archery extravaganza. This is what we're gonna get through here with, so. Scrap solo challenge up here in uh, northwest Wisconsin. Been a little bit of a struggle getting out again this year just because of the work schedule and things of that nature, but uh, we're here. Things haven't quite gone the way I expected. We had our food plots going, we thought everything was going to be awesome, and about the time the leaves fell and the green froze off, um, most of our deer seemed to leave the premises. So. Don't have a whole lot of highlights. Took a whole week off when hunting. Rather than accomplish too much. I seen a half rack. And uh, a couple of does, not even close enough to shoot. They're dead, but really. Really weak season this year, I don't know. It's one of those years. But. Uh, at this point in time, we haven't had an opportunity to harvest anything yet, which is not the way I felt it was going to be at this time. But uh, we're going to keep at it. Battle Scraps fans keep watching. We're going to do our darndest and spend the, the, the month, as much time as possible in late season. So stay tuned, and uh, we're going to keep working hard. and. Um, Hopefully we can uh, get you some good footage as the rest of the year progresses. Here we are, Anchorport Archery in Amory, Wisconsin. I'm Joel, the owner. Hey. Well, they provide everything, got 20 yard range. Indoor golf simulator too.
you know, we were in the, in the tree there, and uh, we seen, I don't know, six, seven does come through. It was over by, by my food plot there. And uh, uh, Jay was filming, and I thought I was going to try to pull my bull back. I figured, you know what, I can do one. Chased the doors around and they happened to come back our way and he chased over there. I gotta look at that nice buck. But... And all of a sudden it, it happened. He was grunting and uh, it sounded like a whole herd of elephants coming at us. And sure enough, he come. I gotta look. John, did you ever take a look at him on the camera? No. He kind of went he right like through so quick he got behind us and then Jay grunted a little bit. He come back and blew and he was he was. He was pretty mad. He wanted to see what's going on there. So it was a great night. I mean, uh, the filming of the coyotes noise is like there right by us. A little too dark and, and the a wolf thing, you know, a wolf coyote. Yeah, at first I thought it was. I actually, yeah, yeah, I actually thought it was the way it was coming. Perfect night. Weather, the wind was perfect. Everything was actually in our favor, except for the wolves and the coyotes. Alright, first of all, congratulations to Dominique on her first deer. It really doesn't get any more fun to watch than that. Plus, she knows how to promote battle scraps. Sign me up. Secondly, did you know there's more than four teams on battle scraps this season? I almost forgot until this episode, but while Team Terry Peters logging and Team Lulich implement didn't get out in the woods early, they did remember to retell their stories. And that makes it easier to edit and, in my opinion, more interesting to watch. Plus, and this is partly why I think it's cool, is you get to see people's emotions while they relive their memories. Sometimes disappointment like Brian's, and sometimes a good laugh like Jay's and Craig's. Sure, as hunters, we always like to see animals meet their maker, but sometimes it's just fun to enjoy what the outdoors has to offer. Like geese. Lots of geese. With that said, this episode is done, and I really do want to hear your thoughts on Facebook about this episode, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But remember, for everyone here at Battle Scraps, I'm Peter Michael, and like, thanks for watching.